It was a day of devastation that brought a community together. One year later, live from the heart of West Alabama, a WVUA special report, Rebuilding Tuscaloosa. Almost a year after Alberta City was pounded by the April 27 tornado, where does the community stand now in the recovery process? Plus the story of how one Alberta City man is now putting the pieces of his life back together after losing his home and his family. Thanks for joining us. I'm Philip Coleman. And I'm Lauren Brooks. We're joining you this evening from the Alberta City community, part of our very special week of coverage. We're drawing closer to the one-year milestone of the April 27 tornado, and all week long we're bringing you special live coverage from locations along the path of the storm. And this evening we're focusing on the areas in and around Alberta City, which is located along University Boulevard in Tuscaloosa, just outside the University of Alabama campus. And uh, of course this area all along the, the University Boulevard area uh, brings back images uh, that many of us will never forget from April 27th. The community right after the storm rolled through looked like a war zone. People just walking out into University Boulevard just stunned. Some people carrying with them what little they had left of their homes and their belongings. Others had suitcases. Many homes, apartments, and businesses were turned into rubble in this area in just a matter of moments. And one year later, though, parts of Alberta City are starting to see signs of rebuilding. Some businesses are back open for business. Other places have been cleared off and cleaned up. But there are still some places that have huge piles of rubble and look similar to when the storm had just hit. And one gentleman who was at home with his family on April 27th was Bernard Jefferson. He was not very far from here uh, when the storm rolled through Alberta. And WVUA's Jennifer Edwards has Jefferson's story as he continues to pick up the pieces after almost losing everything. Bernard Jefferson and his wife Jacqueline spent 12 years in their home in Alberta City before their lives were changed forever. All of a sudden, you know, I just sound like this rumble, this rumble. And my grandkids, my wife, and the kid's mother, they was in one bathroom, and I went to my, my bathroom and my bedroom. And all of a sudden, my door, well, my door was closing on me, and my ceiling was falling down, so eventually everything was over, and I just ran out hollering help. Jefferson helped rescue others before he finally found his own family. His wife was badly injured. She was still here when we pulled her out of the rubble. We put her on a, a rug, me and my neighbor, some little guys, put her on a rug and we moved about from the debris. Bernard Jefferson lost his wife and two grandchildren, five-year-old Keyshawn and nine-year-old Sidrell to the storm. Well, my next couple of months, it was, it was hard. My few days were hard because I lost my wife, my grandkids. And about three or four days later, I lost my mother-in-law. So it was like, it wasn't easy. And all of a sudden I went to an apartment and I have to try to cook for myself and find friends to help me out. But my, at my job, I am so thankful they stood by me. When I first moved to my apartment, I didn't have anything, nothing but the clothes to put on my back. Your job helped you? Couch, table, you know, they, they gave me things and they made me feel comfortable. Just three weeks ago, Habitat for Humanity handed Bernard Jefferson the keys to a new home. His only request? For his new home to be built close to where his former home stood. I just felt like I was still close to it because she passed in this area and I, wanted, I didn't want to leave. A lot of people say they're strained, but that's just the way I feel. She, she's still over there the way I see it. Jefferson says he continues to think positively and push forward because he knows that's what his family would want. I think it all happened for a reason. So, you know, I don't, I don't ask myself why and all that. 
I just look at, you know, it happened for a reason, and I think she's in a good place. One day I'll join her. In Alberta City, Jennifer Edwards, WVUA News. And uh, an incredible story. And as you heard Mr. Jefferson mention, he is planning to stay right here in the Alberta City community to rebuild his life. In fact, you can actually see his home uh, just over our shoulder here. And many people feel the same way as Mr. Jefferson. They want to see this community build back. City leaders say there is still a lot of work to be done, but Alberta City is on its way back. I mean, we still got a lot of clearing to do. There's still a lot of things that, that need to be done. And, and if, you know, one thing too, if people feel like that Alberta is maybe behind some of the areas is because we had more to do. So we've sent, you know, a strong message. We don't want just anybody to build. Bill, I mean, you know, we want to be selective in what type of business we have out here. And many families in the Alberta City area were affected by the April 27th tornado, lost their homes and almost everything else. And in those weeks just following the April 27th tornado, mm -hmm. many of those times were the hardest that these local families had ever faced. Very difficult to say the least. And every family, uh, Philip, use their own way. To, to get through this. For one local family, they use laughter to pull together. WVUA's Bradley Whittington shows you how. Okay. He's a, a very nice husband. He's been so wonderful. Thank you. Laughter and love. All the stuff we went through, we had to laugh. Laughter. It pretty much sums up the Nero family, and it's what got them through a year when each other is all they had. We hover down and prayed and prayed. We come out and uh, that's when we looked around and everything was just destroyed. Not only the community of Alberta, but the Nero family home, which left them with nothing. But it doesn't stop there. A few days after the tornado, I had to have, I had a heart attack, I had open heart surgery, and I had a stroke. But those days are now behind them. The family is preparing to move into a new home built by Habitat for Humanity. But they won't be moving far. From the front porch of their new home, you can see where their old home used to sit. Now an empty lot, but still a daily reminder of what happened on April 27th. I'm having to deal with it. I still have bad thoughts. I still get emotional about it because I went through so much and I'm still grieving. The Neros are excited to be moving into their new home, but they're not as excited about what surrounds their new home today. No. We're still sad. Uh, it's still, it's just empty. You can come out at night and it's still dark. Uh, it's no houses. It's just, it's some progress. You can see some progress, but it's just, I guess because I, just the way I feel is not fast enough. But whether they're happy nah, or sad, so there's one thing yet. this couple is <laughs> always doing. Did you see that cat cross back over there in the no, middle? No, I didn't. I don't like cats. I mean, I wasn't going to She hates <laughs> If he had a came up here, it would have been a different story. <laughs> See the potty to all this up running. <laughs> See, you can be in trouble. <laughs> it's funny how a simple thing like laughter can be everything in a time when people have nothing. Oh, they go in the Cracker Barrel in the morning. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cracked the barrel in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting in Alberta, Bradley. <laughs>